European Climate Energy Mixes. So this is a European uh, Copernicus project and I'm uh, very glad to be presenting this to you and uh, especially we are looking forward to hearing your feedback on how we're doing and what you like to see particularly moving forward because we are really at the start of the process and, and that's the best position for you to uh, provide your input and uh, help us shape this climate service. So climate service will uh, tell you a bit more what they are, but I just want to tell you about this specific uh, project. So our motivation and target. So the question we've been asking ourselves, the overall arching question is, uh, how will uh, climate affect future energy mixes? So we're taking a kind of uh, holistic view, a bit large view, uh, but I, I'll explain the reason for that in a minute. Um, the uh, more structural uh, motivation is that, uh, as you all know, with the energy sector is undergoing a major transformation, and so there is increasing share of power supply from variable renewable energy sources. Demand is variable, uh, the variability is also increasing. And the transformation is taking place against a variable and changing climate. So there's always uh, more uh, surprises like uh, the, the last winter. We've seen that uh, it was particularly warm and, and probably unexpected. So all this changing, uh, uh, despite the, uh, of the Nino, we knew that the Nino was happening, but still it was uh, a pretty warm winter by all records. So we are experiencing these changes all the time. We don't have to wait for the future, the future may bring more surprises, but we already experience these changes. So what we want to do with this uh, climate service, European Climate Energy Mixes, or ESM, is to develop, in close collaboration with you, a demonstration that assesses how well different energy mixes in Europe will meet demand over different time horizons from seasonal to climate climatic timescales, focusing on the role of climate as on the energy mixes. So the uniqueness of uh, this approach is that uh, from at least a climate perspective is this uh, attempt to integrate the thinking of climate information into this uh, kind of uh, uh, holistic energy approach, energy mixes. There are a number of activities around, this is not unique, but the scale, uh, looking at uh, all of Europe, and also trying to interface across the sector, not just individual companies. I think that's uh, bringing a new aspect, and that's what uh, is, we are here about. We're trying to uh, develop something that could be useful by a wide range of users in the energy sector, not a specific company, but we need the help of specific companies to try to build something that can be useful. Now, after all, this is coming from the EU, and the EU wants to see something that uh, is useful for the wider community. So we're going to ask questions like why climate is important for energy planning, and ultimately also as climate scientists, uh, we also want to see whether we can improve this kind of information. So how? the process of using this climate information in uh, decisions in the energy sector can actually feed back to the development of climate information. How can we improve that? So that's not a stationary thing. We need to you know, uh, provide, if we provide good feedback to the climate developers, then we can come up with a better product. And that's where I think the, also the uh, cycle should be uh, um, fed in and, and, and um, continue to, to grow because there's very little of that. There's a lot of uh, information coming out of climate models and uh, it's normally taken for granted, but uh, it's also good to understand that uh, there, there is a way back. I mean, there's a, there's a feedback loop that is not used so much at the moment. And that's, that's again what, what we are here for. So we started uh, our thinking around the uh, E-Highway 2050, this uh, a major European project led by uh, RTE here in France, but uh, with the participation of a number of transmission companies and uh, other research institutes, and uh, NSOE, for example, was involved as well. And they 
selected a number of scenarios, looked at uh, what would happen to the energy uh, grid in uh, uh, 40, 40, 30, 30, 30, 40 years, and um, based on five scenarios. These are the scenarios. I'll just uh, go very quickly. We have a presentation later. We'll uh, explain better what this project is about. But this is just to show you our thinking when we set up the project. We started kind of from this level. We saw, we saw that there was a lot of work uh, going on with this project. Very, it's an excellent work. Uh, a lot of output is on, on the web. And uh, I've been reading a lot about that. And I encourage everybody <coughs> to do that. I think it's really very important and inspirational. And this is the summary slide that uh, they uh, produced with uh, what uh, the kind of changes that the network would require under these different scenarios. So they looked at uh, various aspects. I mean, uh, as you can imagine, the, the, it's, it's very complex, uh, the issue of how the grid is going to look in, 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 in 30 years' time. I mean, it could be very different from what it is now. And so there are very uh, different issues to take into account. And, uh, they go from technical issues, like can we actually build there uh, a new structure, to economical financial, does it make sense in monetary terms, to political and social, political, environmental issues. And so, you know, whether there's social acceptance, for example, for a line going through here, or research and development and deployment, so there's new technologies coming out. Can we use that uh, technology that is in the pipeline in research in 10 years' time or not? So there's all these questions that have been considered uh, to, to different degrees in uh, the highway, as far as I can see. Um, but uh, one thing that uh, is uh, prominently missing, I think, uh, by reading the report and also discussing with people, is the use of climate information in this. So, Presumably, this is because, uh, you know, compared to other things, it's not at the top of the agenda, but uh, I think it's increasingly recognized that this could become actually something that uh, becomes more important. And that's why uh, we thought that uh, adding that extra dimension to that kind of planning could uh, improve the uh, use of the climate information for these particular critical problems of planning uh, 30, 40 years ahead. Um, then uh, the, the, uh, the thinking also evolved and uh, included other aspects like seasonal forecasts, as, as we will discuss later. But that's, that's basically to give you a bit of a story, and uh, I probably need to speed up a bit now, and I go very quickly through some cases to just to justify why we think that uh, you know, the climate is becoming more important in this uh, decisions of the planning. And so we have very recent publications here from uh, uh, number of experts in the climate community showing that uh, you know there are some uh, expected changes, sometimes pretty large. In this case, it's wind projections, and, uh, and and in other cases, it's solar projections. Uh, I just uh, discuss this briefly because it's interesting to see that uh, on the left hand side you see a change in uh, expected solar irradiance. Whether that's uh, realistic or not, that's a different matter. But uh, the point here is that. Uh, there are expected large changes. However, uh, because of the way PV operates, uh, higher solar irradiance in some regions will actually be accompanied by higher temperatures. And the effect, the overall effect, is on the right, where you get actually uh, minimal change to the PV production. So <coughs> you may think, OK, that's, that's good, so we don't need to take that into consideration. But if you hadn't known this information, then you were in the dark. So it's, you, know, you need this analysis to tell you that uh, this is happening, or may be happening, actually. So sorry, we need to be clear about this. This is projection, very high uncertainty. And, and all, all uh, through the discussions here, we need to understand that uh, this products come with a very high level of uncertainty. And, and, but nonetheless, as I said, you are without information, or you have this piece of information, which one you prefer. So another paper that uh, very recently came out is about how the changes in climate will affect um, hydropower and thermal power. 98% of production at the moment is from hydro or thermal, both uh, combined. And uh, in both cases, they observed there's going to be large changes in, uh, around, uh, with the time scale of 2050 for both hydropower plants and uh, 
thermoelectric power plants. Changes, as I said, are also uh, are important at seasonal time scales. Here, just a sample of uh, related to solar irradiance and just from Australia, <coughs> uh, which is a beautiful country on the other side of the hemisphere where I happen to live for uh, six years. So it's, uh, that's why you are looking at the map of Australia here. It's a study we did. And, uh, but the point here is that uh, if you look at the changes between one phase of El Nino, so this large climatic event, uh, and the other phase, you can get differences uh, in summer in solar irradiance of about uh, up to 15%. Again, this doesn't include the temperature effect, but uh, you can see that there are important changes uh, already happening. This is what we see now. This is uh, changes between one season which has El Nino and another season statistically. So it's, it's uh, important signals. Now, briefly on climate, uh, uh, our climate service, it's a 27-month project started uh, <coughs> a month ago. So that's where uh, I said, you know, we are uh, close to this, the beginning and uh, a good place to provide your input. And uh, we have uh, six uh, strong partners uh, listed there, five work packages, I won't go into the details, but uh, what I'd like what to emphasize is that uh, in the planning and the, the project, we put a lot of emphasis on the stakeholder engagement. And that is reflected in workshops like this and other five to come. So don't, you shouldn't be uh, worried that you don't have to come to all of them, but uh, uh, you're very welcome to come to all of them, and uh, if you also know of other people who could be interested in this area and help us develop, because in the end it's something that you could use, then uh, uh, it'd be great to have engagement from you and, and your colleagues. So, the background from a climate perspective, there's now uh, more than ever rich weather and climate data sets available. Uh, through different uh, projects, uh, European or global. Um, energy information is also coming out more uh, um, abundantly than in the past. Uh, there's the information from in Highway, as I mentioned. Uh, there's uh, also quite a lot of effort from uh, organizations like the World Energy Council, the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, uh, IEA. They all produce paper, uh, publications around the effect of climate on energy systems. Um, mainly around resilience, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's the overall you know, recognition that climate is becoming a factor in the decision making and the, in the planning of, of energy. <coughs> and also there are other processes like the Global Framework for Climate Services, uh, which uh, uh, tries to coordinate the uh, efforts that are done here at the European level, at the more global level, uh, as well as the GEO, which is the uh, Global Observing uh, uh, system and, and so there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, frameworks around that uh, uh, we refer to uh, as a way to uh, reinforce the message of the importance of uh, climate information and, and also trying to harmonize the activities around the globe. So we're not acting in isolation, that's, that's, the, that's the thing and uh, we are uh, um, accessing a, a wide range of uh, data. Uh, climate data and energy data to make this work. So the, uh, in a nutshell, this is what uh, we're trying to do in, in ASIM. So this is the target. We're trying to uh, come up with an assessment of the energy mix in, uh, for present day and for seasonal forecast time scales and climate change, taking into account the various uh, supplies which would match uh, the demand that itself is climate related, climate dependent. And so we need to uh, work out first what the demand will be and then work out what the supply. As you know, uh, I'm just preaching to the converted, but uh, that's what uh, the process we are trying to follow. So uh, we are taking into account the major sources of uh, energy. We are kind of ignoring, as it was done in other projects, uh, minor, at the moment at least, supplies like wave. And uh, maybe you know your input is it'd be important uh, in the sense of uh, you have a better view of how other technologies could uh, uh, be relevant in uh, 30 years time uh, that are not there now. 
So we look at the five scenarios, the same as in Ying Highway. I won't spend time on this, but they are quite diverse and trying to uh, expand a good uh, range of uh, possibilities for the future. And this is uh, kind of a war uh, flow chart diagram uh, of our working. And so you see that we start from climate uh, variables on the top left, uh, which include uh, all the variables we think that, that are relevant for the uh, development of, of this uh, climate service and, and particularly the uh, how they affect uh, energy, the supply and demand. And then we convert those variables into uh, energy variables there at the bottom. And this will go into a demonstrator or a portal. You, you, you'll hear a lot about demonstrator today. And so that's basically converting this all this information into something that is digestible by uh, a wide range of uh, users, and uh, it, it's at, it's at the beginning. So, so it also should be understood that this particular uh, phase of Copernicus climate change services is at the start, and it's at the start of a, an eight-year plan. Uh, so we are kind of developing the seeds of. Uh, so it's called proof of concept. It's it's uh, the start of this demonstrator. That's why it's called demonstrator, I guess. But uh, it's, uh, it, it should be understood that the idea is to actually take this beyond and, and make this uh, into an operational product. And so we are here for a kind of long journey, uh, hopefully. I mean, we are only, uh, the funding agreed for the first two years and a bit. But uh, the idea is that if, if everything works fine, then we move on and, and convert this uh, demonstrator into an operational. And so that also gives you some idea of you know looking forward if you're interested to be engaged that's where we don't have time uh, <coughs> and, uh, we'll skip that basically the demonstrator um, is going to be an online interactive uh, tool which allow visualization of energy supply profiles for each country in generation type energy demand profiles for each country in assessment of energy system adequacy at country level. So taking the first two bullets and then trying to see how the two match each other. And, and, and as you notice here, we're focusing on country level. Uh, we are this uh, demonstration phase where the, there's so much complexity in the system, we need to find you know, shortcuts to get to the end of the two years and get something to demonstrate. And so. We, uh, one of the shortcuts is to say, okay, let's look at uh, how climate affect, but uh, then the results are going to be at country level. So it's just an average at country level. It may be too little information for you, but it's, it's something that, uh, as I said, it's a start. And again, this is something we can discuss here, but always bear in mind that uh, you know, we have this two-year uh, demonstration phase, and uh, we can adjust things as we move on, uh, but obviously there are constraints about the resources and so on. So let's uh, we open and I'm willing to hear your opinion about this approach and, and see how we can improve it. Um, so we look at historical period and other things. Uh, so like climate change and seasonal forecast. And so at the moment we don't know how the demonstrator is going to look like. Uh, so I, I just got this image some time ago and I, I like it because it's uh, we could come up with a monster. But, uh, but actually has energy in it, so it's, uh, it's relevant. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm just throwing there, just to say, we, we're open to discussion. Uh, hopefully we won't come up with uh, a monster like this, something better. But uh, uh, I actually, on that note, I'd like to give you an example of a demonstrator or um, prototype is called in that case, from a European project that, that is uh, just uh, produced this uh, prototype. The project is, uh, uh, produced uh, nice cartoons, pretty much like uh, what we're doing here now. I think we copied the idea from that project. So you'll see Alexia over there working hard and uh, trying to understand what I'm saying. And uh, I'm talking too fast, I think. So are, are you capturing? Uh, are you able to understand what I'm saying? Or, yeah, good. I should have checked before, but it's too late. <laughs> anyway, uh, the important thing is that we'll have very nice uh, cartoons at the end like this project did. And they also did something else, uh, they did this prototype, uh, which Carlo over there will explain in more detail soon. 
Uh, but this is uh, like, you know, what can we do with this climate data? This case, in this case, it was wind data. And how can we uh, portray this information in the best possible way, make it attractive, useful, and so on? Uh, just a brief word about the global framework. As I said, we are linking with the uh, uh, our activities also with the global framework for climate services. <coughs> the, uh, uh, this uh, climate service uh, is uh, developing as we speak. We have the key people on, uh, on uh, in the, at the workshop today. There's Max and Roberta. If you want to talk to them, there's also a meeting tomorrow for uh, uh, specifically for the global framework. And uh, we are now looking at uh, establishing partnership with uh, major energy players so that uh, this uh, global framework can be developed in conjunction with this uh, energy players. And uh, there's also pilot activities being produced and uh, knowledge sharing and uh, several other activities. And, and uh, also there is uh, another uh, um, body that is actually just set up to uh, also help with this development, uh, which is called the World Energy and Meteorology Council, which is uh, uh, primary goal is to enable improved sustainability, resilience, and efficiency of uh, energy systems under an ever-changing weather and climate. So it's pretty much aligned with what uh, ESM is doing, and, or the other way around, actually. But uh, WEMC is also uh, just a, a piece of information. Uh, he's been uh, incorporated uh, like three months ago, and the, the headquarter is at the University of East Anglia, uh, where a few of us are based. To summarize, um, there is uh, basically I just go back to my initial slide. Uh, what is unique about this project and this really uh, trying to integrate climate information into the energy system at a pretty high level in terms of you know uh, just look at the system as a whole, uh, supply as a whole, and demand, and, and see whether. Uh, climate information can provide some useful information about the adequacy of the system on the climate change timescales, but also on the seasonal timescales. We we'll want to see how, uh, from season to season, the supply and demand are matching uh, the, at, at the country level, as I said. So I'll stop there. I think I'm pretty much on the dot. And uh, I'll uh, just, we'll have a lot of time for discussions. I know. I know that uh, I can't read that far. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's about photos, videos, and Twitter. Good, good thank you. <laughs> I forgot my um, glasses. But um, <laughs> actually, they are on the. Anyway, Laurent kindly uh, reminded me that I should mention that uh, we are recording. Oh, you said it already? Yeah? No. no. We're recording the sessions. If anybody objects, please uh, say it now. Sorry, we didn't uh, warn you before. but. <laughs> Better now than later. Uh, <laughs> also, the uh, photo, we're taking photos. Again, if you're against it, please let us know. And uh, we're aiming to put some photos on, on the web at some stage. Uh, we're developing a website as we speak. And the last one was Twitter. So we have an hashtag. Sorry, it's at Copernicus SM. No. Is it? no. Underscore ESM. User underscore ESM. We'll, we'll write it there yeah. Yeah. Or, or soon, I guess. Otherwise. Yeah. Or we can circulate it. Yeah. We'll circulate it. Technology is not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here. Good.